All right, meteorologist Chesney McNeil is tracking this kind of moment by moment as you're watching this 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 timeline. Still looking at this evening is when it was really going to start getting most intense. I think even overnight, uh, okay. unless the storm speeds up, which it possibly can, right? We're talking about an overnight system coming in where our winds will be at their highest, at their peak through tomorrow morning. So really that's your time frame, right? Late tonight, I'm thinking after midnight is when we'll start to see those winds begin to pick up and lasting at least through about nine or 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. That's our window right there where we'll have the peak impacts in our area, okay? What are those impacts? Well, let's talk about it, right? We're tracking Hurricane Helene as it continues in the Gulf right now. It's well down to the south of us, nowhere near our area, uh, nowhere near making landfall as of yet, but it will make its way further off to the north and it's moving at a pretty decent clip. We're talking about very heavy rain. We've already had enough rain and I know you're probably thinking, okay, okay. And then keep in mind, this rain has been beneficial for us. We are in a moderate drought from much of North Georgia. So yeah, we could use that rain all at once. Eh. Not the case because, of course, that leads to flooding. With what we've had already and what we're going to receive, certainly more flooding will take place. We got some minor flooding on some of our area creeks and streams as we speak. And so that will increase throughout the area. So because this is an overnight system, meaning that the peak of it will come through the overnight, going out tonight uh, into tomorrow morning, not the greatest ideas, especially when it's dark outside and you can't see the depth of that water. We can't see how deep it is. And so trying to roll over that, could be dangerous for you, okay? Maybe even life-threatening, so be very careful. Flooding on some of our area creeks and streams, if you happen to live near some of those, yeah, you may have a river in your backyard uh, later on uh, this afternoon as that water begins to pile up. And so again, be very, very careful. I know there's a creek in the back of my yard, so I'm even thinking about that. Strong winds, we're talking about winds up to about uh, 60 miles per hour, maybe even higher than that in some spots, especially the further east you go. And so uh, that could lead to down trees which will fall on power lines right which frequently happens for us when we have winds uh, gusting up to about 30 miles per hour they're going to be stronger than that tonight and so no doubt no doubt that we will see some trees falling in our area we are a city of trees and so that's going to be the case folks you got those weak trees that will fall and then you have some sturdy trees that will lose some of its limbs they'll be blowing around as well as long as those winds stay in our area the good news with this so far is that it is a fast moving system which means it will get in and it will get out. You don't want it lingering around. If it happens to slow down on us, we could really be in for some problems. And so it brings in that very heavy rain, brings in those winds, and then it keeps moving right on out of the area. So we don't want it over our area for a prolonged period of time. Uh, and tornadoes, I mean, I'm sorry, a tornado threat, but hurricanes can be slow at times. At times it can be slow. This one moving at a pretty good clip. Talk about the tornado risk. It's highest over toward our east. So as long as that center of circulation remains just to our east the greater impacts as far as that severe weather will be east of our area and that's the way it looks right now if it happens to make its way further over toward the west then that means a higher risk for us but right now that's on the lower end but when we talk about tornadoes you're talking about brief spin-ups that's what takes place this is a all-day event for us because of the rainfall that we received yesterday and that rain uh, that we will receive uh, later on tonight all day into tomorrow. Those impacts I just mentioned, the rain, the wind, and also the threat for uh, any tornadoes in our area. So what do you need to do right now? You need to start planning. The rain is light out there right now. Not much going on. We certainly don't have the wind to deal with. You want to go outside and assess your home. That's number one. Go out there and see if there's anything loose that can be blown around. If you have trash cans maybe on the side of your home, uh, behind the bushes there, like I do, you want to bring those inside of the garage. If you have one, or just bring them inside the house uh, just for tonight into tomorrow, okay? Anchor that down. If not, if you can't bring it inside, maybe put a center block uh, down in the bottom of it so that it doesn't move anywhere. If you have uh, tools uh, around your home, you definitely need to pick necessary precautions there as well. Uh, you want to bring those inside so they don't become as projectiles and start flying around. Also get to your safety spot and make sure it's stocked with uh, all the goods you need like snacks and also maybe games to entertain the kids and batteries of course to power your uh, lights and also uh, your your phone. That's where that's going to be essential because that's where you're going to get all the alerts that we push out to you even if your power is out you can get those right to your phone. We're expecting this uh, hurricane to move up uh, around the Big Bend area but could move over the Tallahassee area as as well. That is where Jay Gray is with the very latest. Good morning, Jay. Nice. Yeah. Hey there, Chesley. 
Uh, look, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here in Tallahassee right now. And it's been a spitting rain on and off, uh, though it's more off now than it has been overnight into the early morning. Obviously, that's all going to uh, really go downhill pretty quickly as we get into the day here and into the early evening. Landfall expected uh, sometime uh, around 8 or so. Uh, and, and then it's just going to continue to wreak havoc as this storm moves inland. We know that there are going to be some serious problems with this storm as it's moved now to a Category 2, and it's just going to continue to rapidly intensify. Again, now a Category 2 storm and expected to be at least a 3, perhaps a 4 by landfall. What the National Hurricane Center says is that means winds well over 100 miles an hour. They're also concerned about what they call a uh, very catastrophic and potentially deadly storm surge along the coast as high as 20 feet, which is really unheard of. And, and remember, this is an area that over the last 13 months has dealt with two hurricanes already and now getting uh, the third and most powerful moving through. Could remain a hurricane or at least at a hurricane strength well inland and into Georgia even as it crosses the state line. So I know, Chesley, you guys are watching this very closely and you expect some effects from this. In fact, FEMA is saying this is going to be a multi-state event uh, with Helene affecting as many as nine states before it's all said and done. All right, thanks a lot. Jay Gray, NBC's home. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate that. If you notice behind Jay, the, the winds haven't begun to pick up there yet either. Again, this storm is well down into the into the Gulf, but we'll continue to move up. So his conditions there will start to deteriorate by this afternoon. I'm suspect, suspecting there. He just broke some news to you. Yeah, as of the eight o'clock update, and it just came out uh, a little while ago. Now a category two hurricane with winds up to 100 miles per hour. So it is intensifying as it continues to push further off to the north. Here's our latest conditions here. Not bad at all. We still are dealing with some rain, so that's more of a nuisance for us this morning. The heaviest rain is well over toward our east into the Augusta area. You've been seeing a few lightning strikes there. You see those flashes in the loop there. A couple of thunderstorms over there. Uh, this will continue to spread westward over toward our area as we head through the, the day. And so if you're planning on going out, I know a lot of you have the day off and you're just inside and you're just kind of waiting things out. And you're probably looking outside and saying, well, it's just light rain. I could probably get out and get this and that. If you don't have to, folks, don't hit the roads at all. And again, this will start to intensify. So if you need to get out, maybe get some medication or maybe check on some of your loved ones, that kind of thing. Now would be the time to do that because if you wait later on this afternoon, that's when we're going to see that rain begin to pick up on you a little bit. And you know how the traffic gets when the rain uh, starts to intensify. So we're going to see that as we head through the afternoon as well. But again, your heavy rain is over toward the east. Nothing severe at all. Again, a few lightning strikes so far. Uh, not even gust of wind. Haven't even seen that reported. I, I've been looking over in the Augusta area and the winds have been on the lighter side. Just a few uh, heavy showers that are rolling through that area. I'm going to widen this out a little bit so you can see where we do have the hurricane well down here into the Gulf. Now a category two hurricane. This red box indicates a tornado watch. That's for just about all of the peninsula of Florida there, except for the Jacksonville area. Even a couple tornadoes you can see well east of the center of circulation. The center of circulation right here, you look all the way over here toward the east, just to the north of Miami is where we have a tornado warning that's in effect right now. Even off the coast of South Carolina, a tornado warning there. What's happening is when you get those winds that coming off the, the, the water and, and hit that uh, land mass, you get some friction there. So you get a quick spin up that happens. That could even be the case for our coast as well. This is very close to our coast up here into South Carolina. So our coastline as well could experience some of those brief tornadoes that happen to pop up. Again, the storm center circulation still in the water that will continue to slide further off to the north as we head uh, through the day today and intensify uh, to become even stronger, possibly category three, possibly a category four before it makes landfall. Here's a better look at it now. You can see all of all of uh, uh, Florida just about under that uh, tornado watch there it has not been extended further north into our state yet, but I suspect that will be the case as we uh, get a little bit uh, further along, especially into this evening. There it is. Category two uh, hurricane winds up to 100 miles per hour. OK, moving to the north, that hasn't changed much more, more to the north, northeast at about 12 miles per hour. This is as of the eight o'clock update. We haven't hit eight o'clock yet, but they decided to put that out early, which we appreciate, of course, to bring you the latest information. Category two hurricane uh, expected to make landfall tonight. Now, when we talk about a hurricane, those strongest winds associated with it, if you break it down into four quadrants here, that front right quadrant is where we have the strongest winds, which is why you're seeing those impacts along the Florida coastline as it continues to 
push further off to the north. Now, the weakest winds would be on the back side of this, which is why we're saying that we want to stay on the west side of this particular system because our impacts would be uh, uh, less, far less than if we were on the right side of it. That onshore flow that's coming in, you got the strongest winds on that side as well. And so we want to stay really on the west side, on the weakest side uh, of that hurricane as it continues to push further off to the north. Now, it is expected to intensify as a category three hurricane uh, by the time we get to this afternoon, even before it makes landfall tonight up toward the Big Bend area. And you can see where we have that red along the coastline. Anywhere along here is where we're expecting some of the greatest impacts. And again, on the uh, right hand side of this is where you're going to feel that onshore flow. So even over toward Jacksonville, they'll be going through it with that very heavy rain and some of those gusty winds as well. You'll notice also a blue outline along the eastern side or east coast uh, of Florida and into our state as well. As the storm starts to move in, uh, once it gets over land, that's when it starts to lose a lot of its punch because it no longer has that warm water feeding it. So we'll start to see it begin to downgrade a little bit as it continues to push in, but expecting it to remain at hurricane status as it moves over toward uh, South Georgia. You still got that orange shore flow coming in for along our coastline. So the impacts will be greater there as far as uh, any severe weather threat. Now, as it moves up to the north, of course, it will weaken. We're expecting it to remain at least at tropical storm status. So you're talking about winds now in Anywhere between uh, 40 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, maybe even some 70 mile per hour wind gusts possible in our area. Our trees really not built to sustain that. Like you go down toward Florida, you got those palm trees. They typically bend in the wind and far more sustainable for winds like that. Not around here, folks. Uh, we have a, a city within a forest. And so those trees, uh, very old, have been around for a long time. Winds like that can certainly begin to topple those over. We have the ground already saturated, and so the soil is nice and loose. Uh, you're talking about Georgia clay. And so uh, that can knock over some trees as well. And so we're expecting that to be uh, at its greatest threat once we get toward the overnight. So uh, one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, when those winds start to pick up, we'll experience that. And it will continue as we head into the morning on Friday, uh, when just about the time you're waking up, right? Around eight o'clock, well, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. By the time we get to a mid-morning, 10, 11 o'clock, that's when we're expecting that storm to be a little bit further off to the north of us, where it will uh, be a tropical depression and then eventually just an area of low pressure that will kind of meander around just a little bit, far enough away from us that our conditions will start to get a little bit better in the forecast area. That's the good news, folks. All right. Looking at rain anywhere from four to eight inches, locally heavier in some spots, 40 to 60 mile per hour winds at its peak around here. And then that tornado risk as well.